All right, everybody, welcome tonight. The Concussed Chef. So the Concussed Chef has a history of concussions, one taking eight months to fully recover from, and the last one landing her in a three plus year recovery that continued today. Throughout her recovery process, she turned to food as a major healing method and outlet. In the beginning, cooking and baking were her go-to activities when she was too symptomatic to handle much else. And felt like one, this felt like one part of her life that she could manage. Cooking meals for her friends and family at home was also a great social activity that required less stimulating environments. She now simply strives to discover new healthy recipes that are brain friendly and delicious and hopes to share the knowledge that she has learned with her TBI concussion community. All right, welcome. Hey everybody. Um, I'm sorry, I've lost my voice just a little bit so you have to bear with me, but I am so excited to be here today. Um, I am just going to um, do my own little backstory and then I have a little PowerPoint to show you a couple meal infos and my favorite um, brands, my favorite uh, cooking tips, stuff like that. So as Claire mentioned, I um, got my very first concussion in um, when I was in college. I was on the sailing team and I unfortunately got hit in the head with the boom. And didn't know a single thing about concussions. So, you know, as I'm sure many of you have experienced that first one where you have no idea of the world that you're getting into, you think, you know, I'll be better in a few days. Um, and so that was definitely a really tough time. I was a senior in college. So many of my friends didn't really know how to stay in and not go drinking. So I kind of went it alone and had to figure out how to recover in that scene. So that took about eight or nine months. And, um, I got back on my feet. I, I pretty much almost recovered and I went to work on Wall Street um, in New York City. So I moved home and I'm born and raised in New York City. And I worked for two years, which was really great. And unfortunately, I got elbowed in the back of the head and um, it all came back. It was like slipping into an uncomfortable sweater. I remember the symptoms and the life that came with it. And it was really different this time because I understood what was happening. Um, I knew what a concussion was and, and um, I decided to really take care of myself this time instead of trying to push through everything. So I went on medical leave from work and uh, I took it very seriously of trying to work out the recovery and, and figure out the treatment plans, et cetera. And one thing that was very important this time around that I hadn't really done the first time was food. And nutrition. Um, in the beginning of my recovery, as Claire said, when I was really symptomatic, I just couldn't handle anything. Um, food was that one thing that I felt like I had control over in my life. And it felt really good to be able to create something and feel accomplished about something when it was hard to do that in other parts of my life. So I turned to food as a major outlet for me. Um, and it was something I could manage. It was um, blossomed into so much else. It was an excuse to get together with family and friends, um, you know, cooking for them and, and eating at my house and, instead of at a super loud restaurant and feeling like I could spend more quality time with people over the food that we created in the kitchen. Um, it was a rare concussion friendly activity that I felt had minimal triggers, all things considered. There were no loud bells. There were no crazy music. Um, it was just the kitchen and I could kind of control the lights and the music, et cetera. Um, and yeah, it was just a rare opportunity to feel that I was very, I was really accomplishing something and creating something. So food has just meant a lot to me. And, and that's really why I created my account because I think it's so important. Um, and I also want to touch on how food has helped me in a recovery way. So I am by no means, I am not a trained nutritionist. I am not, you know, a functional medicine doctor. I wish I was. They know so much helpful information. Um, but I have gone through a functional medicine person and I have, um, you know, run the gamut of all the supplements and the <laughs> different diets. And the this is just my personal experience. So I, I'm definitely not recommending this, but I think it's helpful to share that when I did a um, kind of like a no sugar, no gluten, no milk, I did it very seriously for two months and I felt so different. Um, and 
it was amazing. It was, it was probably three years into my recovery. I had not been able to sleep and my sleep, for some reason, I was able to sleep again. It was crazy. And for those of you out there who have sleep problems, sleep is the worst thing ever. If you can't sleep, it just drives you nuts. Um, so that was really big for me. And, and um, you know, it's very hard to be social and to cut out all these foods and to be that person at the restaurant who asks for these crazy things. And, you know, can you not use butter? Can you not use everything that makes the food taste good? Um, so it was definitely a learning experience, but I think it was, it was worth it to kind of figure out which foods were triggering me and which weren't. Um, so again, a very personal experience, but I just felt that that was important to share because I do think um, nutrition is so important in recovery and eating good foods. And I feel my best in, in recovery when I am eating um, well. That being said, I am a total ice cream fiend. It's like my absolute Achilles heel. So, you know, on occasion I will have an ice cream and I think that's also really important to just be happy for a second because so many other parts of our lives with physical therapy and our symptoms, we have to be so in control of all the time that there are some, you know, I, I do really well during the week and then weekends I really try to enjoy myself and obviously I try to be smart, but at the same time, you know, if I want to get that one thing and it really makes me smile, I get it. Um, so. Yeah, that's just my background. And that's a little bit about me and kind of how I created my account. Um, and I'd love to share my screen. <laughs> I just want to walk through a couple um, meal inspos. I have, you know, breakfast, lunch, uh, things that I just make on the daily and that I think are really easy and, and I want to share them. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Oh. Um, Claire, I think it says that it's been disabled. Oh, there we go. I just had to make you a host there. I gotcha. Thank you. Mm. Sorry, I have to authorize this in my little system preferences. Um, Claire, it says I have to quit and reopen Zoom. <clears throat> Will that ruin the Zoom or can I quit and reopen um, in a couple minutes? Let me try one more thing. <laughs> All right, does that work? Let me try. Share screen. Perfect. Yay. Okay. I'm not sure that I have to do that now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, for starters, these are just my go-tos. Um, you can all see everything and, and hear me just fine, right? Yeah, all good. Okay, thank you. So these are just a few of my favorites that um, I feel are necessities in my daily life, especially when I just want to spice things up, um, especially pumpkin seeds, so good for on top of salads if you want something crunchy. And they're also a really good source of um, natural magnesium, which is hard to find in other foods. So I love pumpkin seeds. Sometimes I sprinkle them on avocado toast with some olive oil, salt and pepper. It is truly so good. Um, chia seeds for oatmeal, omega-3s, um, which I'm sure you guys have heard about. Um, the chia seeds, salmon and walnuts on this list, really good for omega-3s. Uh, turmeric lattes, these are my favorites. Um, I don't know what I would do without them. I ordered I'm completely blanking on the brand, but um, they come up with this turmeric that you put in an almond milk little latte. And I got like a really cheap latte maker and I put some cinnamon on top of it and it's really good. Um, walnuts, I usually put in oatmeal or salads, blueberries, oatmeal, or I make a jam with blueberries and uh, water. Salmon, on one of my favorite foods ever. Um, kale and spinach, very easy. And... 
Um, cinnamon is actually an anti-inflammatory food. I love to put it on oatmeal. I also put it on sweet potatoes. You guys have to try that. It is truly so good. Um, and last but not least, green tea. Um, caffeine is kind of a hot topic and I avoided caffeine for a very long time, including caffeine in tea. At the same time, green tea is very, very good for you. Um, so I decided that for my body, I wanted to drink green tea and I feel great doing it. Uh, it's definitely, you know, you can talk to your doctor about it. Um, I still don't drink coffee, but I just think, you know, you got to weigh the pros and cons, but I personally love having a cup of tea with my breakfast. So those are just my staples. Um, I want to go in and just kind of show you a couple things that I like to make. Um, so these are all um, my favorite breakfast. Number one, banana pancakes. I love pancakes so much. I usually don't put maple syrup on top. And for a while, I was so sad about that because um, what else do you put on pancakes if not maple syrup? But I created this blueberry jam with blueberries, chia seeds, and water, and a little bit of vanilla extract. And it thickens and it's so good on top of the pancakes. They're, the pancakes are really made with bananas, eggs, um, and cinnamon, and a little bit of almond milk. So also as I go through this, um, Claire can share your email, uh, my email with you. And if you find any recipes or any pictures you would love to get the recipe for, just shoot me an email. Um, I'm happy to share any or all of them. But um, this is a little bit of avocado toast and salmon. Um, Gluten-free bread, also kind of a hot, um, hot topic. <laughs> I personally sometimes would use rice cakes, but at the same time, I just don't think rice cakes taste the same for me. So I experimented with a lot of different gluten-free breads and the Simple Needs brand for gluten-free bread, they have this sourdough bread. Um, the ingredients are very clean. And I personally love it. So again, a personal decision, but my body feels good with it. And it opens up so many options for um, yummy foods, such as salmon toast points uh, with dairy-free cream cheese, avocado toast. Um, this right here is my everyday uh, breakfast or lunch. Um, I love oatmeal so much. I always get gluten-free oatmeal, oatmeal, usually Bob's um, Red Mill, with uh, walnuts blueberries, uh, bananas, and then I throw in some chia seeds. I can put hemp seeds in. Sometimes I do pumpkin seeds. It's such a good base to add so many anti-inflammatory and brain-friendly foods. It's very filling. It's very clean. Um, you just can't go wrong with it. Um, I just threw this in for any moms out there who are trying to be healthy and their kids don't want to join them. I uh, made these for Easter and they're so much fun. Um, and then my little cousins love them. So I wanted to throw those in there. Those are coconut flakes are the little tail. Um, and last but not least, smoothies. Smoothies are um, not just breakfast. They, I, I have them for snacks very often. I usually do spinach, um, coconut water or almond milk um, and just blueberries and bananas. Sometimes I add peanut butter if I want it to be more filling, but I love smoothies. They're very easy to be, to be clean. Um, so that's breakfast, which is my favorite meal. I can't tell if you can tell how passionate I feel about this meal as I'm talking. Um, lunch. Lunch was really a struggle for me because it, it's not, you don't have a lot of time to throw something amazing together, but you also don't want to just have sandwiches every day. Um, so I've kind of flipped and flopped with lunch, but I always usually eat the leftover protein from dinner, um, which whether it be, uh, this is blackened salmon, um, this is some kind of, um, Indian style chicken, and I'll put it on salad with pumpkin seeds for the crunch, avocado slices, and um, sometimes I'll put in, um, what's it called, cucumbers. And I use Primal Kitchen salad dressing if I don't have time to make one, or if I've made one early in the week, I'll make a big batch of salad dressings and use that. Um, this is white bean and ham soup, so totally delicious. Uh, but again, usually you need a ham bone, so I make that you know after family holidays. This is uh, tuna out of the can, which um, can be a little high in mercury, so I don't eat it often, but um, I would say I probably eat it once a week. And it's, I personally love it. I mix it with vegan mayo uh, with a little balsamic glaze. I make um, sauteed kale with um, roasted broccoli, cucumber, and sometimes a soft boiled egg if I am feeling um, like I have a little bit of extra time. 
um, this is probably the most important slide, desserts, um, and obviously snacks. I'm a huge snacker. I don't know about you guys, but food equals energy for me. And especially with my concussion, if I am hungry, my symptoms will be 10 times fold. Um, so these are very important for me. So I always have fruit on hand, apples, bananas, strawberries, um, something easy to eat. And I also love kiwi. This is homemade granola that um, I can't remember if the recipe is from Eating Bird Food or one of those other famous websites. It's absolutely the best granola I've ever had. I make it and it lasts me two weeks. Um, I put it on oatmeal. I put it on dairy-free yogurt. It's just amazing. I, I eat it by the handful. I bring it as a snack in a bag. Um, it's hard to find a really clean granola. I'm not sure if you guys have had that experience. Um, so I think that making my own has been really fun. And you could just switch it, switch it up, add some coconut, you know. It, it can get it can get exciting. Um, this is a, just a classic. This is rice cakes with a little bit of peanut butter, banana and cinnamon on top. Um, that's a very clean snack and quick. Um, this is my dessert side. These are the best desserts I personally, um, they're called fake, um, what are they called? Snickers. And they are dates. So I open up the dates. Um, and I put a little bit of peanut butter inside the dates and then I sprinkle that with coconut. I put those in the fridge, I let them harden. Um, and then I dip them in um, ch dark chocolate with a little bit of coconut oil. And the dark chocolate is Hue Kitchen chocolate because that does not have soy lethargen or any additives to it. These are so good. I, I honestly sometimes can't even make them because I will eat all you know 12 of them in one sitting and it's a problem. So. Um, be cautioned, but they're also very clean and I love them. These are zucchini muffins. Uh, one of my favorite muffins. I wanted to put them on the slide. Uh, I usually put walnuts in them. I love having crunch crunch in my food. And these are tahini chocolate chip cookies. Um, very interesting. I feel like the first time I had them, I was like, you are lying to me. This is not a cookie. You know, I felt it didn't feel like a cookie, but now that I've had one or two of them, I am addicted to them. I love them so much. So um, they're just delicious. And I usually dip, the, dip them in heated up almond milk. They are very tasty. So last but not least, dinner time. Um, dinner time, I originally, when I was first in coast, concussed, I made so much chicken and veggies, chicken and veggies, chicken, veggies, and quinoa. Um, that was my thing. And eventually you get sick of chicken and veggies after three years. So these are a few things that I have really gotten into. Um, I have an air fryer. I am very blessed to have one, but I make the salmon in the air fryer and it is just really, really good. Uh, this salmon is just lemon, olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic powder, very simple. Um, this is everything bagel chicken, everything bagel spice, usually from Trader Joe's or just from the market. I always love to put on chicken. Uh, with shredded um, Brussels sprouts and roasted broccoli. Uh, this is roasted broccoli. This is taco night. I love Mexican food. And ever since I was introduced to Siete Foods, I love making tacos, uh, you know, with sauteed peppers, guacamole. There's so many healthy goodies you can put in it. This is sauteed Swiss chard um, and just a little veggie platter. Um, and yes, this is gluten-free fish and chips. Um, this is cod with these cauliflower crumbs you can find at Whole Foods. Um, and it's so good. It's really, cr it's crispy. Uh, I personally love fish and chips. I'm not sure about you guys, but I just wanted to put a, a couple seafood options on there um, because it's really fun to switch it up. And this is just a fun little veggie bowl with everything bagel seasoning and a um, black bean burger. So <laughs> I want to talk about favorite brands. So as much as I cook, um, and I cook very often, I also rely on brands of foods that, you know, if I don't have the time to home make something, I love these. And it took me a really long time to find good brands. Um, and, you know, a lot of, of label reading, because they can sneak so much stuff on a label that you have no idea. So um, I really love these, you know, some of these can get expensive such as like Primal Kitchen salad dressing is almost $7 for a salad dressing, which is kind of crazy, but it lasts for a long time. Um, and if that week I didn't have time to make some salad dressing, it's, it's so delicious. They have this lemon turmeric 
flavor that is blows my mind. It's so good. Um, Kiu Kitchen Chocolate is my favorite dark chocolate. Um, clean, uh, melts very well. I get the huge gems that are good for cooking. I get the little chocolate covered almonds at snacks and they have chocolate bars with hazelnut butter in it that are so good. Um, Jones and Go Macro Bars were, have been my favorite granola bars. I feel like everyone goes through a phase of granola bars trying to find your favorite. Um, these have definitely been the cleanest for me, at least that I've really enjoyed. Um, and Siete Foods, um, I love their lime tortilla chips and they also have almond flour tortilla wraps, which are really good for lunch. You know, just throwing in some, some meat, some avocado, uh, some peanut butter, banana, um, just very easy on the go lunch. So that's been really, you know, crucial for my cooking. Um, and, oh, they also have this uh, dairy-free queso that I've only tried one flavor, spicy Blanco queso, it was very good. Um, Annie's condiments. Um, I really love Dijon mustard and other mustards. However, a lot of condiments have a lot of sugar in them. So in my sugar-free phase, I turn to Annie's condiments and I have not never looked back. Um, they make really great stuff. They make other great things, but um, just for in my kitchen, I, I use their condiments often. Um, yogurt. I um, really miss a quick breakfast option, obviously besides oatmeal for the road, like yogurt. Um, and in, you know, doing dairy-free yogurt was really hard to find because most dairy-free yogurts have sugar in them. So Kulina yogurt has been my all-time favorite. It's a coconut yogurt. They have the most fun flavors. They have, um, lavender, what's it called? Blueberry lavender, which is delicious. Um, they have bourbon vanilla, and they also just have classic plain that I can put all my blueberries, all my walnuts, all my chia seeds in, and it is truly amazing. Um, and my partner does not really do the health food with me and he eats all of these brands, which is big because, um, you know, sometimes I have to lie and say that it's not gluten-free or dairy-free and he loves it. Um, Simple Mills um, is really when I don't have time to do the banana and egg pancakes, which are really easy and, and really great. Simple Mills has a great pancake and waffle mix that I love. And they also have crackers that are really well-made. Um, they have really good stuff. They have these cookies that are, um, they have crushed pecan cookies that I dip in uh, heated almond milk. If you couldn't tell by now, I love having dessert. I always need something after dinner. So um, I've gotten really creative with finding easy desserts. And Purely Elizabeth Granola has probably been the cleanest granola I've been able to find. They have a few other products coming out at um, Whole Foods that I have not tried yet. But I also, as I mentioned before, um, make my own granola a lot of the time. But Purely Elizabeth has really fun flavors like coconut cashew. So definitely worth looking into. Bob's Red Mill for oatmeal. Um, and uh, this is not a plug in any way. I am 0% related to them. But Thrive Market, I personally love. Um, they have such a good setup when you're doing grocery shopping. It's kind of like an online grocery shopping, like Whole Foods. But you go on Thrive Market and you can click ingredients. You can click, I only want to see gluten-free options. You can click all these things that sort the foods for you and give you these brands. And um, they give you 20% off your first order. You can do monthly ordering. I really love them. And they always have the things that I want. So um, if you're looking for something like that, that's a great one. Okay. And last but not least, I just wanted to mention these. I know this isn't obviously food, um, you know, but I think this is so important because as much as I said in the beginning that cooking and baking can be a concussion friendly activity, there are certain things that really trigger me when I'm cooking. So um, I just wanted to share these with you because these were some life hacks that made my life a lot easier when I was cooking. So number one, <laughs> I have so many spices and uh, whenever I went in the pantry, I would be searching for them. And for those of you who have, who have done vision therapy, um, that is a lot on your eyes, searching for those objects back and forth, your eyes are jumping, et cetera. Um, and especially in a very like busy environment, such as your pantry, if your pantry is like mine, which is, you know, has a lot of stuff in it. So I organized it alphabetically and it has saved me so much time and so much effort when I'm cooking. Um, and I know it sounds small, but it, it, I don't know, it made a big difference. I wanted to share that. Number two, the dishwasher used to be my worst enemy. For those of you out there who get dizzy 
or who get head pressure when you go, when you bend down, um, the dishwasher is big. So I have now, I do it in sections. I think of it, I do the top row first, easy peasy, put the forks and knives away. If you know, this is very specific to my dishwasher. But um, then when I do the glasses and the plates, I try to pick them all up, you know, as many as I can. And then I put them on the table. So I used to get them from the row and put them up into the cabinets. And it was a ton of going up and down, up and down. And I would get really dizzy and feel crappy after doing it. So I now unload the dishwashers. Um, you know, I put it on the table first. And then once I have everything on the table and I can stand up straight, then I will start to put things away. And I just felt that that really helped my symptoms. Um, so um, my other two tips are really when you're cooking for a group, I don't know if I have any moms out there or people who love to cook for friends or a big family, but um, I'm usually fine to chop a few things, but if I have to chop a bulk thing, then my arm will get very tired. My neck will get tense. Um, I really have to watch my posture when I'm chopping. And if I can, or if I have a helper, I will usually, you know, outsource some of the, especially sweet potatoes, which are so hard to chop. Um, you know, I, I get someone to help me with the chopping because it, it can just get a lot. Um, last but not least, the, I really learned that when I had guests coming over, when I had my family members, um, you know, when I was cooking for them, but then they also just hung out in the kitchen with me, I had a lot of trouble multitasking. So, you know, they would be talking to me and suddenly I'd be trying to figure out what to put where and chopping and organizing the meal. And sometimes I would get kind of overwhelmed. So what I've now done is I will prepare as much as I can beforehand so that when they're here, I can enjoy myself and be involved and, you know, just throw the rest of the dinner together. So if you have the option, that's the way that I prefer to do it. And that is it. So I know that was a ton of information. Um, how do I get you guys back? And I'll stop sharing. But I am so happy to take any questions. Um, and I hope that that was helpful. I'm not sure, you know, I wanted to share some meals. I wanted to share some of the tips I had learned. Um, and I also just wanted to share that I'm just like you guys and I'm just trying to figure this out. But, you know, we're all in this together. And um, yeah, we're just doing our best. Amazing. Thank you so much. I'm just going to stop the recording now, but I would like to thank you so much again for coming and speaking with us today.